Today we're going to take a look at a magic hexagon. <clears throat> and this magic hexagon is going to help us um, in generating all of our trig identities. Okay, so this is the magic hexagon that we're going to use. We're going to place a 1 in the center of the hexagon. And then we will place the 6 trig um, functions around the outside of the hexagon as shown in the picture. All right, for our quotient identities, all of our quotient identities can be found by either going clockwise or counterclockwise around the hexagon. In the example on the left, I am demonstrating how we can generate tangent is equal to sine over cosine. All right, pick a spot along the hexagon that you want to start, say it tangent, and going clockwise, I can say tangent is equal to sine over cosine. I can start anywhere along the hexagon and go clockwise around the hexagon and I can generate a quotient identity. The example on the right shows going counterclockwise around the circle. Again, I may start anywhere along the hexagon. I can go cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. And that's by starting at cotangent is cosine over sine. So all quotient identities can be determined by going clockwise or counterclockwise around the hexagon. The product identities. <clears throat> I've got two different ways to find product identities. The example on the left here demonstrates that when we have a function that is between any two functions, it is going to be equal to those two functions being multiplied. So in other words, I've got sine and it is in between tangent and cosine. So that tells me that tangent times cosine is going to be equal to sine. And again, I can do this anywhere along the hexagon. All right, the second way that I can find a product identity is demonstrated over here on the right. When two functions are opposite of each other on this hexagon, then their product is equal to 1. And I've demonstrated that here. Tangent and cotangent are opposite each other on the hexagon. There's the one in the middle. So tangent times cotangent is going to be equal to 1. So two different methods for finding the product identities. Okay, next we're going to take a look at our reciprocal identities. All of the reciprocal identities can be found by going through the 1. All right, so over here on the left, I've shown that sine is equal to 1 over cosecant. All right, and again, I can start anywhere along this um, hexagon that I want. Over here on the right, I am showing starting at secant. Secant is going to be equal to 1 over cosine. So all of the reciprocal identities can be found by going through the one that's in the center of the hexagon. Our co-function identities. Um, they can be found by going across the hexagon, either left to right or right to left. All right, and on the left, I have demonstrated going across here at the top, I've got sine is going to be equal to cosine of 90 minus r theta. Um, and as all of them are demonstrated there, all three of those work that way. Going the other direction across, cosine and sine, that means cosine of theta would be equal to sine of 90 minus theta, going right to left. So each one of the co-function identities can be found by going across the hexagon, either left to right or right to left. The Pythagorean identities. Um, again, we've got a couple different ways that we can generate these. Um, we can, on the left, we can either uh, go clockwise or counterclockwise around the three inside triangles starting at the top and using addition. All right, so here's the inside triangles right there that I am talking about. All right, if I start at the top, I have to use addition. All right, and within this little triangle right here, I can say um, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. I've got to use addition because I'm starting at the top of that inside triangle. All right, on this down here, I can say tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. Over here I can say 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. So if we start at the top, all right, and go either direction, we're going to go using um, addition. All right, now, if we choose to start at the bottom of one of these inside triangles, then I've got to be sure and use subtraction. So taking this top inside triangle right here, I can do 1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared. All right, I could also go the other way. I could say 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared. So it doesn't make any difference whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise. If you start at the bottom, you're going to use subtraction. So cosecant squared minus cotangent squared equals 1. Secant squared minus 1 equals, or secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared. All right, so all of the Pythagorean identities can be found by using 
three inside triangles, either clockwise or counterclockwise. When you start at the top, you're going to want to use addition. When you start at the bottom, you're going to want to use subtraction. All right, that pretty much wraps up the identities that we can uh, find using this magic hexagon. Um, if you are a teacher and you would like to download the magic hexagon handout with all of these diagrams that I've used in this video, then you can visit my teacher page teacher store at um, the following address right here. And for teachers, if you would like other uh, teaching um, ideas, then you can also visit my blog and read things about that. Um, as a student, if you found this math trick helpful, um, I'd really like it if you'd like the video and share it and pass it along to other students. Thanks.